Welcome to the How to Write a Book podcast, the show that helps you plan, write, and publish your book, even if you're a beginner or just feel like one. Now, for your host, she's written over a dozen books and helps others bring their books to life. Here she is, Maciel. Hey, everyone, and welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I'm super excited that you're joining me today. Um, Now, this is posting on a very special day inside the United States, (laughs) which is Super Bowl Sunday. Woo! You know, whether or not your team has made it or... uh, For me, none of my teams have made it. Um, It's still a really great day for me, particularly because what I typically do is I spend all day cooking and having drinks. Um, And this is like a family uh, tradition for us. You know, we'll go outside, we'll make the carne asada, um, we'll pop open some uh, some beers, we'll have a laugh, we'll watch the game. Um, my sister and my dad shout at the TV, um, and I never have any idea what's going on. And me and my mom, we're always like, I don't know, is this a goal? <laughs> you know, That's where I'm at as far as sports. <laughs> but um, uh, what's really cool about this is that it is kind of like a miniature holiday here inside the United States. And whether or not you're celebrating, you know, the Super Bowl Sunday, I do hope that you are having an excellent day and that the beginning of this year has really reached you in a way that inspires you to keep writing. So this video, we're going to talk about what I've learned um, about accountability from 2020 and thanks to my clients and especially how you can make it work for you. Okay, so accountability. So what is accountability? Um, Accountability is basically um, when you can hold yourself accountable. Now, when I first started with accountability, I was introduced to accountability um, with the idea that you had to post publicly uh, in order for you to hold yourself accountable. So you have to put it on Facebook or put it like on your discussion board or tell all your friends and family that you were finally writing that book and you swear you're going to have it done by the end of December, the end of that year. And you thought that that was exactly what was going to push you to get your book done. Um, That's exactly what I thought. I thought that if I did that, then I would for sure have the pressure to say, okay, well, I've told people and therefore now I'll have to write my book, right? I'll have to make this work, right? Well, that's not exactly what happened for me. And I think that this happens to a lot of writers. And I realized later, and especially with my clients and with feedback that I've gotten from other writers, that this might be something that happens to introverts. And it makes sense, doesn't it? Because we're writers, and when we're writers, we tend to be, now this isn't for everyone, but we tend to be a little bit more introverted, introspective. We really like to spend time with ourselves, by ourselves. There's a reason why we seek refuge inside books, you know, because the characters get us. They understand what we're going through. People in the outside world, mm, not so much. (laughs) So, After feeling hard, because I did that, and I realized that immediately I felt anxiety, guilt, shame, and I self-sabotaged from the beginning. I didn't meet meet my goal. And it was a complete emotional mess for me because I thought, well, if accountability didn't work for me, then I must be broken. Like, I must be wrong because apparently accountability is working for other people And it's not working for me, so therefore maybe I'm not meant to be a writer if it doesn't work. Um, And this might be something that you're going through as well. And this is why I'm bringing it up because um, it was definitely like dragging, getting dragged through the mud. You know, you're like, oh, I thought it was going to work. I thought it was supposed to be this way. Um, And then when that glass shatters, you question yourself. You question if you're a writer. You question your creative work. But let me tell you that actually I found out that I respond to different types of accountability. Now, let's dive into what that is. So it turns out that there are different types of accountability. So it will depend on what kind of person you are. So for example, I strive really well. I have discovered because, you know, as a working professional um, and as somebody who ghostwrites books, I have come to understand myself that I will meet a a, a, a deadline. I will meet a deadline for someone else. I will meet a deadline if I'm under contract. And of course, if my income is dependent on it, right? If you don't meet your contract, you're not going to get paid, or at least you're not going to get paid that 
day that you were hoping until you turn in your work. So after some, you know, ups and downs, this might be the same for you. You might instead be the kind of person who you strive really well when there's like a role model or someone you look up to or a writer you look up to and they know that you're writing and you want to be accountable to them because you honor and respect their time. Or you might be the kind of writer, and I think this is true for most people, when money is in the game, skin is in the game. And I think that this is true for most people because in our culture, money is a very sacred and yet taboo item. And we don't talk about it, yet we always want it. We can't talk about it with other people, but we secretly judge each other by like how much money you make. So in other words, money is really interesting, unique, and precious to us. And because of that, it can be an excellent motivator for accountability. Now, this is something that I learned from taking that course last year where I signed up with a writer who um, was at that time, like I was like, okay, I'm going to sign up with this person. I really like them. And not just that, but I'm going to pay hundreds of dollars to show up. And that pushed me forward, not telling everybody in the world, like, oh, I'm going to write a book because money was in it. And also somebody who um, I was like, okay, I'm going to try to turn this work to them. Then that pushed me forward. So last year was the year, 2020 was the year that I wrote the most. I wrote 12 drafts of novels and some of them I published and some of them are still work in progress. But that is the most that I've written ever, you know, in my entire, you know, 30 plus years. So plus years. So um, that was a light bulb moment to tell me that maybe accountability is something different. Maybe accountability changes on who you are, also who you are as a writer, also your relationship to accountability. You know, perhaps you actually have a history of getting stung when you try to be accountable in a certain way. So that is kind of what I took from that is that certain types work for me and therefore they might work for you. So now let's talk about why accountability can be really important. And this is actually something that I underestimated. So before 2020, I thought, well, you know, like I could write, I could totally write if I wanted to, you know, I just, you know, don't have the time or I just, I need to get something else first. I need to get something better, you know, and there was all these excuses. And when I signed up for that challenge in 2020, I realized that accountability was super important. It pushed me. It essentially pushed me to a deadline where I couldn't make excuses anymore because I couldn't tell, you know, that teacher like, well, I just didn't have time. It's like, well, you signed up, you have to show up. So that was really a flag, like a flag light bulb moment for me because I was like, okay, I'm now writing the most that I've ever written. There's got to be something to this. And we've heard about it before, but again, going back to the beginning of this video, I had dismissed it because I thought, well, it doesn't work for me. Therefore, all these other excuses. But when I shifted what kind of accountability it was, then it started lighting me on fire. And then when I met with my clients, we talked about account- accountability. Accountability is integrated into my one-on-one program. And I had underestimated how important it was. So when I first started my coaching career, I would give advice to my writers and I would tell them, well, this is what you could do, what you should do, what I recommend you do. Okay, good luck and I will see you later, right? But when we would meet again, they hadn't met, we hadn't, they hadn't pushed forward. And it wasn't until I integrated accountability into my program that we started getting massive results, massive results. Books finished, manuscripts finished, outlines finished, words, thousands and thousands of words finished. And it was the importance of accountability. Now I want to give a shout out to um, my clients who, who, these clients who have specifically rolled with me on the accountability, helped me improve the accountability. So if you guys are watching this, Cindy and Anna and Cassie, y'all, thank you for honing this and really helping me to also see like, okay, there's a gem here. So what I learned from them is that accountability can really drive us forward. And there are different ways to approach it. And once you have skin in the game or you you have a tie to this person, you know, that might be a better accountability for you than just simply shouting it out into the world. And I'm sure there's more versions of accountability out there, but these are the top ones that I have felt that have really lit me on fire. And once we got that going, oh my gosh, just a game changer. It has been really kind of just like, the ball was rolling and everything made sense. Everything made sense to them. The program was making sense to them. 
And of course, more importantly, they saw progress. And that was super important. And of course, exciting for me. So that is a couple different ways that you can approach accountability. Now, here's what not to do if you are going to consider doing accountability. And if you're like me, so as a writer, and I think that a lot of people are like this, but I do want to just go ahead and dive into this further. Um, we are sensitive and and even if you're not sensitive, it's totally okay, but this might still apply to you. If you're sensitive and you know you're sensitive, first, don't shame yourself because you're sensitive. Sensitivity is a gift. And I learned this from uh, my very good friend um, and confidence coach, Trish Blackwell. Sensitiv- sensitivity is a gift. And now working with writers, I realize that it truly is a gift and a skill. It's important because as writers, sensitivity allows us to see into characters and characters are what drive story. So if we can see within the eyes of a character, we can further develop and push the story. So don't ever shame yourself for sensitivity. But secondly, take that sensitivity and take note of it. I encourage you to think of ways how that sensitivity can push you into the right accountability. So for example, If you're sensitive and you know that you might self-sabotage if you post on Facebook about your book, then maybe you shouldn't do that because you're only going to hurt yourself and you're going to stall your book further. And we definitely don't want that. We want to get you back into writing. So if you feel like you're sensitive, don't even spend time contemplating, why am I sensitive? How can I fix, quote unquote, fix my sensitivity? How can I make myself less sensitive? Instead, just say, hey, all right, I'm sensitive. That's part of my personality. I made the way I'm supposed to be made. So how can I use that to my advantage? How can I use that to further my ability? Maybe you need um, an accountability partner who's just as sensitive as you are, you know, or maybe when you, and don't do this, don't do what I did. Maybe you need, I need a coach, but you don't need a certain type of coach. Now, when I first had a coach many, many years ago, she wasn't necessarily a writing coach, but she was a career coach. And I won't even mention her name. Um, This coach, she was a quote unquote tough love coach. And when I would show up with my, you know, assignments and ideas of like where I wanted to, you know, push my life and my goals for writing back then, wow, if I hadn't done everything, and even if I had done everything, she would grill me. Like she would be like, well, why didn't you do this? And why were you thinking this? And how do you expect to even get here if you can't even do this right? Oh, oh my gosh. (laughs) And I'm saying these things, um, not to, not to like highlight that that is bad. Instead to say, that me as a writer, that doesn't work for me. Instead, I felt worse. And eventually I stopped doing stuff and I stopped showing up. And I just spent several more years beating myself up because I thought, well, if I can't even do that right, then how can I possibly get a book right? You know, and some people need tough love. Some people do, you know, and but that's up to them. That's up to their personality. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's uh, this is for like the person who if you're like me, and you know, like, you know, that's not going to work for me, I I need something else, I need something more of a cheerleader, then take that into consideration, because that might work for you. You know, that might be what you need, you might need somebody softer, somebody who understands the process, somebody who'll say, yeah, I totally understand. Sometimes life gets in the way. And of course, we want to finish our book by the end of the year, but consider that you might need to push it out a month or two. That there's nothing wrong with that. Just keep going until you finish. So if you're considering that, hey, I want you to just take note of yourself. I recommend taking note of yourself and saying, what's going to work best for me? How am I going to push myself to write? my book. What will get me there? Truly, truly what will get me there? Not what I think will get me there. Not what will push me to get there or what others say will work. What will actually get me there? And uh, one of the things I recommend is looking into the past. And this is something that actually occurs with my clients. They say, I I, I uh, have trouble finishing. Therefore, I can't finish a book. And I'm like, mm, that is not true. That is not true because you are here, you are alive, you have, you know, a children uh, or a job or you got your career, you have an education, you have finished things, you definitely have, you just need to put the right pressures into the right spots that work for you. So don't feel like as if, oh, I, I, I can't finish a book, you can, you just have to, I recommend, reframe it so that it works for you. Okay, now speaking about accountability, y'all, thank you to those previously mentioned clients who have let me know about 
what they would love to see. And I was like, this is brilliant. Accountability group coaching. We have launched an accountability group. Yes, this is the thing now. And I'm super excited. I'm super excited to launch this. This is when we get to meet. We get to meet three times a week for at least an hour and we just show up and write. Now, again, going back to accountability, you need someone who's going to create that space for you. You need to put some skin in the game because if you don't do that, then you might not show up. So if money is going to be that skin or or if carving out time or being, um, you have to be responsible for someone, then this could work for you. So this is on Patreon. We are hosting this on Patreon. There are other tiers on there if you just want to support because you're a fan or if you want access to the private community that we have for the How to Write a Book podcast, then that private community will be open to you if you join um, one of the two tiers. Now, this last tier is essentially when we show up and we write. And what's cool about this is that we have different times. So that hopefully it accommodates for everyone who's international. Also, it's just about writing. It's about saying, hey, we have this on the schedule. We have this on the calendar. Show up so you can write. Now, of course, we're going to keep changing up every month because we want to accommodate everyone. But in addition to that, what you're going to get is that you're going to get monthly Q&As at the end of the month. So if you're writing and you have a question, you can submit that to me and I will do a live Q&A at the end of the month addressing your like most writer's blocks that are arriving. And the reason that we're doing that is because we do not want to detract from the writing. We want to keep you writing because what's most important is to push your writing instead of being worried about the writing. We can always go and edit. We can always revise, but we can't revise and edit if there's nothing on the page. So if you're finally ready to say, this is my year. This is when I'm going to finish that book. If, if having your book on, on, uh, in your hands on a shelf, like just burns in you, then this could be for you. This is about showing up. This is about carving out the time for yourself. This is about saying, Hey, I'm actually going to put some skin in the game because I'm not going to let my dream sit on a shelf. I'm going to have my book sit on the shelf. That is what I deserve. And especially, especially for those of you who are like me, who every day that you don't write, your confidence weakens. And that is not something that I want for you. I want you to show up for your writing so that your confidence grows. Because as your confidence grows, your writing will grow and you will improve and you will continue to improve. And eventually, eventually, dear writer, you are going to get to the end of that book. So if accountability coaching is right for you, then join us. You will have every month at least 12 hours, at least a dozen hours scheduled into the month. Can you imagine if you add another 12 hours to your writing schedule, how much you will get done? And that is what we have inside our accountability um, accountability group coaching. And our first meeting is Monday, February 8th. So if you don't want to wait another month to jump in, then jump in now. And especially because we have a special promotion going on between now and the end of February. And the end of February, um, I will be giving, uh, for anybody, everybody who signs up between now and the end of February, I will be giving you personalized short videos on the top roadblock for your writing. So once you sign up for the um, tiers in Patreon, then you message me, you let me know like, hey, this is the top writing block that I have. And I'm going to send you a personal video on how to tackle it so that you can have that in your repertoire. But that's only if you sign up between now and the end of February. Okay, so that's like an exclusive like here right now is what you're going to get. And keep that in mind, because I do charge for my one on one coaching. Um, so this will be included, the short video will be included for you. And it's going to be personalized to you, whatever your question is. So that will be available either for um, the different tiers, you will find that information on the tiers, it'll be at the top of the tiers for that promotion. Um, and again, if you are tired of waiting, then sign up for this accountability group coaching, and we'll see you inside we will help you to stay accountable add it to your schedule. And of course, you know, really encourage you to push forward and finish your book. So y'all, if you have any questions, I'm Maciel at blackheartedstudios.com. And again, remember that your story deserves to be told. And, you know, don't let your, your book, you know, just sit in your dreams, you know, your dreams shouldn't sit on the shelf, your future book should be. So thank you, y'all. And I'll see you again next week. Hey there, writer. Thank you for listening to the How to Write a Book podcast with your host, Maciel Valenzuela. If you like the show, we'd be happy if you left a review. For more information on writing and the writer's life, go to www.themaciel.com. 
That's www.themassiel.com. We'll see you on the other side.